The object landed next to a friend with a soft thump. Panic filled the air as their strange barks rang across the small trench we'd stopped to rest in, their voices reaching a volume that only ever meant one thing. The scent wafted over to me, poignant and harsh, burning my nose and setting every hair on end. Danger. Death. Destruction. I knew the smell well. Too well. It rose from the ground in the dangerous places, and sometimes, after a particularly bad night, friends would smell of it too. Sometimes when they did, they didn't all come back. I felt every muscle twitch, desperate to run, screaming at me to get away. I lunged towards it. One of my earliest friends had been a gentle one, so caring and kind, even among my friends. They tended to me, fed me, healed me when I needed it, cared for me when I could not. They never liked blood, and when I came back covered in it, I could feel the strain it caused them. When the feathered one broke into my home, it had been swift and violent. I remember its claws as it lifted me, ripping handfuls of fur as it did so. I'm ashamed to admit that I yowled like a newborn. My friend had tackled them without hesitation and with a fearsomeness I had never known from them. They tore his mask away with bare hands and brought their strange, hairless, powerful arms down on it, over and over. I could hear bones snapping. I could smell blood, both of the feathered and of my friend. Even now, the scent lingers in my mind. I carefully closed my jaws around the object, lifting it. The odour this close was almost overpowering, but I could still make out the all too familiar scent of the feathered beyond. I ran. This wasn't the first time I'd seen this object, but it was the first time I'd been so close. The last time had been in a different place, among the steel shelters of the old cities. I'd been paralysed then, unable to even move. There was nowhere to run, no way to get back. One of my friends pushed me away, breaking me from my shock and jumped, without hesitation, on the strange object. Even so, I would not regain my senses for a long time. I spent more time than anyone else, whimpering and begging by his side. It was pointless. I knew he wouldn't wake up. He was missing half his body. I heard my name being called. I could hear friends' names as well. Were they trying to come after me? I picked up my pace. My legs burned, my eyes watered, but they couldn't catch me. They could run longer than me, but on a short distance like this, nobody was faster than me. Something whizzed by my head. The scent of burning fur joined the assault to my senses as I felt my skin underneath blister. I nearly stumbled from the pain, but I kept running. The calls were growing more desperate now. I could feel the panic in their voice yelling for me to stop, but I couldn't. I leapt across the strange fallen logs of the feathered one's home and into their ranks. They tried to scatter, but they weren't fast enough. The object will go off soon. I won't make it out, but neither will they. My friends are safe. I do not regret it. They would have done the same without hesitation. <laughs>